I'm Leah Selena. And I'm Deron Smith. And this is DSU Today, a show that gives you an inside look as to what our students and faculty are doing to make their mark on the world. So let's get started. Each year, thousands of fans come to Dover, Delaware for one event and one event only. You know what I'm talking about, NASCAR. Let's check in with our correspondent, Tamika Shackley, who had the opportunity to witness and experience NASCAR firsthand. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dover International Speedway with Delaware State University's National Association of Black Journalists. Hey! We're really excited to be out here today, and we can't wait to let you guys know all of the exciting adventures that we go On October 1st, 2016, Delaware State University took 10 talented members of its chapter's National Association of Black Journalists, also known as NABJ, to the Dover International Speedway to collaborate and participate in the NASCAR Diversity Program for the Drive Sober 200 race, a part of the Sprint Cup Series. As journalists, we were there to create content by producing pictures and videos to our own social media accounts, as well as NASCARs through hashtags, likes, and retweets. We students were given media hot passes and access to the garage and pit where we were given the opportunity to get up close and personal with race car drivers, pit crew members, and media specialists. We were given the opportunity to create short bits like these here. Hi, my name is Tamika Shockley and I'm here at Dover International Speedway for one of the premier weekends in Delaware, NASCAR Race Weekend. Hey there, here we are at the Media Center in the Dover International Speedway. This is the heart of everything mass communications and just about everything that we as students are here with learn. The day was jam-packed with fun activities and the opportunity at an inside look on a popular sport. Some of the best parts included meeting Jim Cassidy, the Senior Vice President of NASCAR Racing Ops. Also, taking selfies with world-renowned racer Danica Patrick. Getting to know the amazing pit crews and seeing how they got their start. And the icing on the cake, meeting trailblazer Bubba Wallace. in the winner's circle for the NASCAR Drive Sober 200 event. I think we all know who the real winners are today. I'm here in Dover Downs at NASCAR with 10 of DSU's best NASCOM students who are going to get to experience NASCAR firsthand as a part of a NASCAR diversity initiative. Um, NASCAR diversity uh, or multicultural development as my team is called has an unofficial partnership with the National Association of Black Journalists. We've been a sponsor of their national convention for over five years and this year we wanted to integrate the collegiate chapter um, throughout the entire race season. Today we're proud to have out Delaware State uh, your student NABJ chapter to come and experience NASCAR as student media members. Today you're going to have full media credentials as you have your hot pass um, and we're also going to have access to our press box which is going to be up at the top so you're able to watch the race from different points throughout the day. Today we're also going to be meeting several people that work throughout the industry whether it be industry executives, uh, pit crew members, the team members as well as drivers. You're going to see plenty of cars, lots of actions. I do want to go into sports PR or sports broadcasting, but I'm not opposed to starting somewhere different. As long as I can get my foot in the door with PR, I know that my final destination will be sports PR. I 
invited the students or me. But I can't tell you this. This is a great opportunity for DSU. We'll be back on the track here at Dover Day. Hey everyone, it's Portia Brewer with NABJ at the Dover International Speedway for NASCAR Drive Sober 200 event. Join me as I take you through the NASCAR's experience today. The National Association of Black Journalists teamed up with NASCAR's Multicultural Development Program, Drive for Diversity, in order to expose mass communication students to the sport itself while also covering race day. Hello guys, Cabral Cooper here reporting live from NABJ. I'm here with Gloria and she's going to tell us a little bit about her position here at NASCAR. Well, thanks for coming out. Uh, yes, my name is Gloria Molina. I'm with the Multicultural Development Group at NASCAR. What we do is we oversee all the diversity programming for NASCAR, um, both on-track and off-track initiatives. Our biggest program is the Drive for Diversity program, which is our uh, main program that we uh, recruit, where we, whereby we recruit um, female and minority drivers, give them the tools and resources um, to succeed at all levels of the sport. We also have a pit crew development program that is part of that initiative where um, many of the athletes that you see on pit road um, come from other sports and we recruit them to uh, take part of the, the pit crew program. We also have uh, the off-track initiatives which my colleague um, Lauren Houston and I uh, work on very uh, arduously. The NASCAR Diversity Internship Program is a uh, industry-wide program where we um, you know recruit talented students from various universities to come and take part in all uh, aspects of our industry whether it be uh, from communications to finance to legal um, really to introduce students to, to the many opportunities within the sport um, we also have a variety of other programs and initiatives such as the scholarship program um, various other um, initiatives where we really want to just uh, attract new fans and audiences Sounds good. So it seems like a lot going on in this room that we're in here right now. Um, could you explain to me a little bit what's going on in this room? Is this the recruitment room where we do look for those people who are um, able to qualify for these positions and things such as that? Actually, right now we're in Dover International Speedway's media center. So you'll see um, a lot of your fellow colleagues, um, whether they be photographers, um, journalists, um, media from various media outlets. Um, and right now with the rain delay, it's, it's a little uh, more traffic than usual. Um, but we, uh, we do um, have uh, various components of the media center here that you're free to check out if you'd like. It sounds good. It sounds good. Um, once again, Cabral Cooper here reporting live from NABJ here with Gloria, and we're signing off. Thank you. Thanks, Tamika, and the entire team that covered the race. Also, thanks to Dr. Hagos and NABJ for making this happen. Our next story shows a group of individuals coming together before a different reason. Now let's check in with Jasmine Saunders, who attended the Police Community Relations Town Hall meeting. Thanks, India. I'm on Dulles University campus at the Community Police Relations Town Hall. This town hall is a joint venture between law enforcement, legislators, First State Community Action Agency Incorporated, and Delaware State University. Let's take a look at the conversation about the inclusion of all cultural sensitivities and better relationships in the community. It seems like we all came from the different areas at the same point in time to say, okay, what can we do for what we decided? Recognize what goes on in our community. It's right after the shootings in Dallas. Uh, we so why not bring together our uh, faith-based institutions, churches, our law enforcement, our communities, our elected officials, our students? This is the thing that we can get our arms around. We're all working to make our community stronger each and every day. Neighbor helping neighbor. Uh, it's not a matter of we versus they. It's not a matter of white versus black. It's what we can do to make a great area even better. And, uh, Strengthen our neighborhoods. I think it starts with two way conversations. Mm -hmm. We just have to talk about something. Mm -hmm. We can do to increase our training process, to increase the relationship with people in the area, and to continue to build the trust with those places. Audience members voice their concerns regarding law enforcement behavior towards the community they are sworn to protect and serve. I want to tell people that you were working on to get it shut down, and honestly, you're not doing anything. 
Because the club is shut down Thursday, Friday, Saturday, by Sunday night from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning, you hear bottles in the houses, people cussing, loud music. I will come and do it to your house and see how you like it. And we still have to, we work with the council and suburb, the council and suburb members here, and we not continue to work to uh, to bring that into control. <laughs> we have, we've had the visual police spike. patrols out there, and uh, we work with the club to bring them in the line. Well, my question is geared towards the internal, uh, internal policies of the police departments that are represented here. Is there an incident, if there is an incident and a report is filed and an officer lies on the report to cover his partner or another officer, are there consequences in your department for lying? When you police the, the community, then I think it should be all areas of the community, not the specific neighborhood. There is even one question about the lack of diversity in the police departments, specifically in Delaware PD, and how they will tackle that issue when strengthening community and police relations. I think that you can probably get to the common in terms of being, it continues to be a challenge. I think it continues to be a challenge for law enforcement nationally, not just here in Delaware. Although we, we sort of reflect on, you know, agencies our size, agencies in this region. Overall, we don't, we're not that bad in terms of other agencies. Uh, but, you know, it does not reflect the population in Delaware. We're right around, uh, to give you numbers, probably right around 10% uh, minorities. We're probably around 13% female. And so about 3% Hispanic. So we still have some significant challenges. Uh, you know, I always reflect on when I came on the scene. Um, that's one of one of those goals that I always had. And, you know, when I came on, I think I probably had the largest minority class in our history, and we still haven't managed to surpass that. And we continue to work toward that every day. Uh, we, you know, like I said, we have our highly successful seminars. We work very closely with Nova. We reach work very closely with all our institutions. So the thing that I that we find challenging now is that as we continue to increase. We have folks that are at that age, especially folks from my time on, uh, are already starting to retire. So now we start to face some of those challenges, filling some of those gaps, and continuing to keep those, keep those numbers up. So we, we fight that challenge every day and we continue to do that. There was a noticeable lack of contribution from representatives of the church who were indeed on the panel. Is there room in this discussion for churches and other faith based institutions? These pastors believe there is and that the church is an integral part within the community. We have to think beyond the benediction of, of Sunday morning. We have to do holistic ministry and get out the masses of the people and meet their people's needs. And if and if we have centers in our churches, I think that we need to be the ones, you know, who's offering the, the GED programs, the, the tutoring programs, the mental health programs. And we need to be the ones to even reach out to the Department of Labor and, and, and ask if they would have a satellite office in our churches so that they could come and interview people for jobs, teach employability skills, right there in the, in the, in the church. Jesus ministered outside. Jesus lived where the people were. He fed the multitude outside. Okay, if we look what Jesus did, he has given us a model. Mm -hmm. for, for being leaders in the community. We should all be able to come and see one another as people created in God's image. All of the people of value in the sight of God. And if we see ourselves as an equal value in the sight of God, we should see each other with a higher value. And, and also we see ourselves in segments of society, which is somewhat accurate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have different communities, different neighborhoods, different positions in government or whatever. Um, but we tend to look at the differences that separate us. And I think when we see ourselves as, as children of God, as really one race, human race, uh, there are differences between us. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Bible says man focuses on how we're here, so now in the heart. So if we can try to see each other in that way, then a lot of the stuff starts breaking down. Do you hope this is the beginning of continuing dialogue? Thank you. Thanks, Jasmine. I hope these conversations between police 
community leaders and educators continue. Now, we're going to a segment called Faculty in Focus. Today, we shine the spotlight on Vince Chelly, Director of Technology and Mass Communications, and Dr. Marcia Taylor, DSU alum and Hornet advisor. Within my teen years, I wanted to be a director of like the Emmy Awards or, or the Oscar Awards because I just I, I loved watching them and I thought it was such a it would have been such a challenge to raise to that level. From we know what is out there, we know what the students are going to be uh, dealing with, we know what we need to teach them, we know what they need to learn. Getting them in the space where they're going to be able to get the knowledge that they need, gain the knowledge that they need, gain the skills that they need, and to leave here, walk across that graduation stage and go out and seek employment is, you know, it is a challenge in itself, making sure that we do it in, in the right way. I've always been a technical kind of person, uh, and having worked at TV stations, at production houses, having done a, a lot of production prior to taking on teaching. Uh, I know the importance of not only being able to handle technology, being able to operate technology, but being able to understand technology. Uh, the best part of my job is when a student comes back and they're congratulating us for teaching them what they needed to know that put them where they are right now. Let me have that. Now, hear how distorted that sounds right now? You know why? I'm Vince Chelly and that's the buzz. And so my interest in mass communication goes back to high school where uh, it was a Votech and it still is a Votech high school and I studied television, radio um, there at Howard. We also had a newspaper and I wrote for the newspaper as well as a community newspaper for high school kids and so that sparked my interest in mass communication. The best part about being a DSU alum and a faculty member is that I get to impact future Hornets I, as well as maintain my relationships with the alumni um, and so it's really kind of fun to work at uh, my alma mater where I am um, sort of fusing the past with the present and the future. And so that's what is most enjoyable to me. I try to impart the, the need to stay current and to try to stay up with uh, current media technology, the trends. And uh, it's challenging, but every semester I, I look at things that I can do to add um, a new twist to the classes that I teach. And I think that's what keeps it fun, it's refreshing, and um, it keeps the students engaged. I'm Dr. Marcia Taylor, and that's the bus. It's really cool to see a different side of our faculty. But you know what else is really cool? What? Being able to see a different side of the world. Mm -hmm. Our students are encouraged to participate in study abroad programs where they get to travel the world and experience different cultures. One of our students got the opportunity to travel over 10,000 miles to Australia. Wow. <laughs> Take a look. Surrounded by ocean views, Australia is a place that has earned the right to be called one of the world's most lively and colorful countries. The beauty of Australia is truly mind-blowing. It's stunning blue water, it's many lighthouses, it's cute little lizards, 
and the magnificent cliff scenery. Interesting Aboriginal culture, the kindness of natives and non natives alike, the interesting animals, and the delicious food, as well as the amazing architecture that could be found anywhere. Australia is a country and continent worth every penny. That's a wrap for this week's edition of VSU Today. Make sure you check us out right here next week.